Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to proclaim good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden cause what is sown to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Epistle to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God and Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from, from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know. The one who is coming after me, I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. On the evening of March 24th, 1980, Roman Catholic Archbishop Oscar Romero began to celebrate a mass in the small chapel of Divine Providence Hospital in El Salvador. After two days of engagements filled with preaching and meeting with fellow colleagues in ministry, Romero stepped up to the pulpit to give what would be his last sermon. Because as he said his final words and stepped away from that pulpit, a red car pulled up on the street outside of the chapel. And from the car emerged a man who stepped through the door, raised a gun, and fired one, possibly two shots, only to then speed off in his car. Romero was struck in the heart and died quickly thereafter. He died for speaking out against the social injustice and violence happening in his country. He died for proclaiming that as Christians, the Salvadoran soldiers should obey the ways of God rather than the oppressive ways of their government. He died for pointing to God's presence with and love of those on the margins, those who were the most poor and the most disregarded. He died a martyr of God and was canonized a saint on October 14th, 2018. And much like John the Baptist and Isaiah, I would imagine that Romero's life was difficult most of the time. I imagine he likely felt lonely or afraid. I imagine he had to muster an enormous amount of courage to say the things he felt he had to say and to do the things he was called to do. But there was something in Romero, just as there was something in Isaiah and John the Baptist, that gave him the strength and the courage to do the work he was given to do. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that he knew, just as John the Baptist and Isaiah, he knew who he was, and he knew who he was not. This week we have John the Evangelist's introduction of John the Baptist in the wilderness. And while we heard a very similar account from Mark's Gospel last week, there are some key differences between the two readings. One of the most important parts of John the Evangelist's account of John the Baptist is the priests and Levites' question, Who are you? They ask him two times, who are you? And ask, what do you say about yourself? To which John replies, I am not the Messiah, but rather the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. And in his statement, in his proclamation, he clarifies and reiterates his call to testify to the light not to be the light, but to testify to it. John could have just as easily used his power and his influence to pretend to be a Messiah, to claim that he was indeed the very one that everyone had been waiting for. But instead, he stuck to his work. And because of that, because of his understanding of his role and of his call, and his willingness to stick to that, he was able to pave a pathway in his time and in his place for Jesus to come and be made flesh. And I think Romero was able to do this, Romero was able to do the same as John the Baptist because he knew who he was and he knew who he was not. Because he knew who he was called to be, he too was able to pave a pathway for God to become incarnate in his time and in his place. And I know this about him. I know that he knew who he was in the work to which he was called because he wrote the following profound words. 
It helps now and then to take a step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. I find Romero's words to be so grounding during Advent as we seek to wade through the darkness of our world and name all of those places that the light of Christ is most needed. Because there is the temptation for us as we do the work of Advent to do too much. The needs of the world can be utterly overwhelming. And I know more than anyone that there can be a temptation to enter into any given situation and attempt to be a messiah rather than a minister, a master builder rather than a worker. Because, of course, my way is the right way. It is the best way, always. But Romero and Isaiah and John the Baptist all knew that when we seek to be the master builder, when we think of ourselves as the Messiah, we can, in fact, limit the vision of God's kingdom. They knew, and they invite us to remember, that the magnificent vision that is God's work is always beyond our vision. We are ministers, not messiahs. Workers, not master builders. Prophets of a future, not our own. And there is indeed liberation in realizing that. There is liberation in knowing that the burden of fixing all of the problems of this world does not lie solely on our shoulders, but rather upon God's. And in truth, it has already been accomplished. It has already been fixed in the life and work and death and resurrection of God made flesh in Christ. And we are sent by God to testify to that truth, to testify to that light, each in our own way. So on this Gaudete Sunday, as we give thanks for and rejoice in the dawning light of Christ in our midst, we are invited to ask ourselves, who am I? Who am I? And how is the Spirit of the Lord upon me? In the wilderness of this world, how has God appointed me to bring good news to the oppressed and to bind up the brokenhearted? How has God called me to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners? How has God sent me to testify to the light with my words and with my whole being? Who am I, and what work have I been given to do? The days may be difficult, and it may be lonely, but the work to which we are called is the work which allows the true light of the world, the true Messiah of the world, to become incarnate here and now. It may feel like a tall order, but we can rest in the words of Oscar Romero. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. And this enables us to do something and do it very well. 
It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter in and to do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Thanks be to God for that. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Glenda, our diocesan bishop. For Chase and Sarah, our clergy. For this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. This morning we pray for Mike, Walt, Phil, Julia, Ellis, Sam, Rebecca, Alice, Jenny, Vanette, John, Robin, Sharon, Patsy, Carrie, Rick, Cheryl, Cliff, Janice, Marcian, Kelsey, and Susan. Pray for those in any need of trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Brooke Moore and Pete Yunker. Pray for those who have died.
Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, very good morning to y'all. Happy Gaudete Sunday. It's one of those fun church words. It is a great occasion uh, that gives us the opportunity to wear our new rose vestments. So if you think you've never seen them before, you haven't seen them before. This is the first time. And you get to see them again on the fourth Sunday in Lent. So twice a year. Very exciting. It matches the pink candle and the Advent wreath. Um, trivia, Gaudete uh, is Latin, which means something like rejoice which is why we kind of rejoice on this Sunday. So that's where you, that's where you get, but um, I'm excited. It's nice. And it's rose, it's not pink, it's rose. So it's, um, if you are visiting for the first time, or maybe the first time in a while, welcome. We are so, so very glad that you've joined us this morning. Um, I do see a familiar face in the congregation. Gage Tittle is with us. Gage Postulant in the diocese and one time intern here. So Gage, just wanted to have you back. Um, there is a lot happening this time of year, if you haven't noticed that yet. Um, this Sunday, a week from Sunday, a week from today, next Sunday, um, there'll be one service for Advent 4. That'll be at 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock combined service on Sunday morning, and then we'll have our Christmas Eve services in the evening, and then a Christmas Day service at 10 o'clock on Christmas Day. So it's all in the bulletin, but just for Sunday morning next week, make sure you keep that in mind. That there's one service at 10 o'clock next Sunday morning. Um, this Wednesday evening, our plan is to do our annual caroling at Morningside uh, this year. We'll be at Morningside Home, where we'll meet at five, uh, 5 o'clock to do caroling there, and then we'll go out to dinner at the Brick afterwards. They're having, they were having some, um, some COVID inflections, and so the last sing-along got canceled. We're going to play by ear like we are doing it this Wednesday, but we'll send out a notice. We need to change that. Um, but we plan on going this Wednesday. And if we don't go caroling, for some reason, maybe we'll just go grab dinner anyway at the Brick. And that'll be fun, too. Um, a big thank you to all those who participated with the St. Nicholas Shoe Drive. I don't know if you saw, there was a great article and picture in the weekend paper this weekend. Um, we raised, I think, 55 pairs of shoes. Um, for the Boys and Girls Club. I think this is the 13th year that St. John's has done that. So thank you 
all for that. Uh, a very, very worthwhile and needed ministry here. Um, I think that's out. I'll direct everybody else to the bulletin um, for the announcements there. Um, and finally, I am um, very sad to tell you about um, Peter Yanka died yesterday. Um, husband of Carolyn and father of Erica Huber. Um, Peter's service will be this Wednesday here in the church at 2.30 p.m. Um, visitation will be beforehand. So um, please keep Peter and Carolyn and Erica and their family in your prayers. And that is all that I have. I have an announcement. <laughs> it's Chase's birthday! <laughs> birthday within a week of Christmas. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, Abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Are we celebrating any anniversaries this week? Maybe she. Everybody. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his court.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. It gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed John, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, 
and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.